So another key concept of trigonometry is to find the unknown angle. We're going to be given two lengths of a side here, three and five. And what we do here is we put our finger on this nice unknown variable here and think about what information we have. We have the adjacent and we have the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. The opposite is far away over here. So we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. It's always a good idea to write so ka toa. We have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So for certain, we're going to be using the cosine. The C stands for cos. So I'm going to say the cosine of the angle x. And by the way, we can call this any variable. We can call this a, b, y, or theta. Theta is commonly used for variables, and it looks like this. So cosine of some angle, these belong together, is equals to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Not the hypotenuse over the adjacent. is equals to the adjacent, the numerator, over the hypotenuse. So we have 3 over 5. So the key step here to solve for x, because we're trying to find x, we're not trying to find the cosine of x. The cosine of x is simply a ratio. It's some numerator divided by the denominator. The cosine or the, or the sine or the tangent of some angle is simply two sides divided by each other when we're talking about a right angle triangle. So to find x, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the inverse cos of both sides. So we're going to take the inverse cos of the left side, which is cos x, and we're going to take the inverse cos of the right side, which happens to be 3 over 5. So the key idea here, here to remember is that the inverse trig function cancels out with the regular same trig function, exposing the variable x. So again, this inverse trig function cancels out with the same trig function. If this was a sine inverse, this would cancel out with sine of x, whereas if this is a tan inverse, it would cancel out with tan of x. So this is nice because we can now write that x is equals to cosine inverse of 3 divided by 5. And this here is simply some number. And because we're in degree mode on your calculator, this here is simply the angle, x degrees. So it's good to know that this inverse symbol on your calculator can usually be accessed if you use some a button, such as a second or shift. And then you can see this cosine inverse button. And this cosine inverse function, just to understand a bit better, what, what it is, what's doing here is it's giving you the, this is only for enrichment. So if this is the, some kind of sine curve. If this is a sine 30 degrees, so this is, we'll just say this is sine of x, x degrees. If it's sine 30 degrees, the x value is 30 it's going to spit out some y value between negative 1 and 1. So the y value here, if we're talking about sine 30 degrees, it's going to be 0.5. So if I were to say that 0 0.5 is the y value, what's happening here is we can say that sine 30 degrees is equal to 0 0.5 or 1 half. So what we have here is we have some x value, which is the the angle, it's going to spit out some y value. The y value happens to be the result between negative 1 and positive 1. And what the inverse function does, if I were to say, what is the sine inverse of 0 0.5, which is the same thing as 1 half, it would spit out the corresponding x value, which is equal to 30 degrees. So essentially, these this inverse trig function undoes what this, the regular trig function does. The regular trig function takes 30 and spits out 0 0.5, whereas the inverse function takes the y value and spits out the x value. 
So this is why we can say that the inverse function undoes, or you can cancel out with the same trig function. So let's try another concrete example here. Here we're using theta, and we're interested in the opposite and the hypotenuse. It's a good idea to put your finger here. And from this finger, the opposite here is 5, and the hypotenuse, the longest side, is 6. So we write so ka toa, and we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. So we can write sine of the angle. We always have to write sine and the angle together. They belong together. There's no such thing as sine all by itself because sine is not a variable. It's a function. You take the sine of some angle, theta, is equals to the opposite, which happens to be 5, over the hypotenuse, which happens to be 6. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. Sine inverse of sine theta is equals to sine inverse of 5 over 6. And in math, when we have an equal sign, we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to take the, the same thing of both sides. We can add to both sides. We can multiply both sides. We can divide both sides by the same number. And in fact, we can square square root. We can even trig inverse both sides. So hopefully, you can skip this step and go right to here. If you want to expose this magic, magical golden egg, this angle, we're going to take the sine inverse of 5 over 6. And make sure that you're in degree mode, otherwise your answer will be wrong if you're in radian mode. This is approximately equals to 56.4 degrees. And it's nice to verify that this angle uh, looks reasonable. This here looks kind of right. So when you see some unknown angle and you have two pieces of information, we use trig, Sokotoa. Yeah, not only can we find side lengths, we can also find the unknown angle.